we now start uh, with a discussion on fault simulation. Fault simulation is a very important tool which is used in various stages during the you can say test flow. It is used in conjunction with test generation, it can be used much later during the test flow cycle and so on. So, this is more like a tool which is used to get or analyze the quality of the test vectors and depending on the result of the analysis, you can take some remedial actions. Okay. So, let us see what fault simulation is. So, the inputs to a fault simulator are of course, the given circuit in the form of a netlist, set of test vectors and a set of faults, this is called the fault list. So, what the fault simulator computes, it tries to find out what are the faults that are getting detected means out of these fault list by this test vectors. So, percentage of the faults in F that can be detected by T. So, in addition it can also gives us some valuable information as to what are the yet undetected faults, the faults which are still not detected. Diagrammatically, so we uh, just show it like this, we have a fault simulator. So, as one of the inputs we give the circuit net list, as the second input we give the set of all faults, well this can be the original set of faults after fault collapsing whatever and thirdly we have a set of test vectors. So, what we get at the output is some kind of statistics with respect to fault coverage which are the faults that are detected, which are the faults which are not getting detected and so on. So, as I said you can use the fault simulation tool for various purposes. So, here I have shown a few test grading concerns the determination of the quality of a given set of test vectors. Like suppose there are alternate ways of generating some test vectors. I use two alternate methods to generate the test vectors for the same circuit, let us say T 1 and T 2. Now, I want to compare and assess which one is better or not. Typically, I use a fault simulator for this purpose. I run my circuit and the list of faults with this set T 1, I again run with T 2 and I compare the fault coverage, I see which one is better. right? Second use is in the test generation process. Here we generate a test vector T i to detect a fault F i. Now, here where fault simulation is used is, so as we are generating a new test vector T i, we immediately carry out fault simulation to find out what all other faults are also getting detected by the same test vector. Now, see here you may be a little uh, apprehensive that why you are using fault simulation along with test generation. I could have used test generation again. Now, the, the thing is that the complexity of fault simulation is much less as compared to test generation. Test generation takes much longer time as compared to fault simulation. So, we want to reduce how many times we need to run the test generation algorithm or the tool. Suppose, I have 100 faults, should I run the test generation tool 100 times for generating test for these faults or I generate a test for the first fault, I immediately run fault simulation which I know is much faster and fault simulator tells me that this test vector also detects 5 other faults. So, I remove those 5 faults from the fault list. So, my initial list of 100 faults quickly gets reduced during the process and my overall time becomes much less. Okay. Fault diagnosis sometimes uh, we try to identify the location of the fault through simulation by simulating faults and of course, in design for testability uh, means approaches uh, actually where we can identify some points where some additional 
controllability and observability mechanism can be provided to improve testability. This can be done through simulation again. Now, let us see how to simulate faults. We start with a very naive approach. Here, we are saying that we shall be repeatedly using a simple logic simulation tool. What is a logic simulation tool? Logic simulation tool is a software that takes a circuit net list as input and a test vector as output. It will compute the logic values at all the lines. So, it does not concern with faults, just the logic values. That is why this is called logic simulation. Okay. So, here suppose I have a fault list consisting of m number of faults f 1, f 2 to m a f m. What we do? We simulate the fault free version of the circuit, let us call it capital N and the faulty versions in presence of these faults, let us call them n 1, n 2 to n m with respect to a given set of test vector, let us say there are n test vectors. So, for any test vector with any fault, if there is a mismatch in the output, it will indicate that fault is detected. So, here we means here what we are doing, here we at a time we are inserting a fault in the circuit, then we are doing true value logic simulation. So, what I mean is something like this. Suppose I have a simple circuit like this. Now, I want to introduce a stuck at 0 fault on the line. What I do? I make a small circuit modification. I apply a constant logic value here and then I simulate. This is my circuit modification. So, this line is going nowhere and here I am applying a constant 0 to simulate the effect of stuck at 0. So, after doing this I can use a normal true value simulation, I apply a logic value and see what my output values are. right? So, for every test vector I have to simulate for the m faults and one time for the fault free version and there are n test vectors. So, n multiplied by m plus 1, so many runs of the logic simulation algorithm. So, it is of the order of n multiplied by m, number of test vectors multiplied by number of faults which is pretty large. Now, the various fault simulation algorithms can be classified as follows, like the first one is the one just the naive approach we just now saw, the rest one are some kind of faster versions. So, we shall see how they work. So, serial fault simulation we have already seen, this is the naive approach. So, we have seen that it requires so many runs of the logic simulation algorithm, where n is the number of test vectors and m is the number of faults. So, there will be m number of faulty circuits and one faulty and one fault free circuit. So, many simulations you have to carry out for every test vector. So, the basic steps can be summarized like this. We first simulate fault free circuit for all the test vectors and save the responses in a file. Then at a time we inject one fault, we modify the circuit net list just in the way I showed, I shown you, just we can make some changes in a circuit net list, so as to incorporate the effect of the fault. Then you simulate this modified net list for every vector and you compare responses with the one which you have saved to check whether the fault is getting detected or not. So, if you see that the fault is getting detected, then you can report that the fault is detected and you can suspend simulation of the remaining vectors, because you know that it is already detected. You need not simulate with the remaining vectors. So, actually the total time will be less than n into f plus 1, this is the maximum. Okay. So, as soon as you find that a fault is getting detected, you need not simulate with the remaining vectors. You move on to the next fault. So, advantage is this, this, this is very simple. Second, you do not need a special software for this, just a logic simulation tool is enough. 
drawback is that the time complexity is, is of the order of m into n which is pretty high and also you cannot use it in the event driven mode. In the event driven mode uh, you recall is a method of simulation where I do not simulate the whole of the circuit. I simulate only that part of the circuit where some changes are taking place. So, unnecessary I will not simulate the whole thing, okay. but this method of serial method unfortunately, cannot be used in the event driven mode. Okay. So, let us now come with the improvements. The first method is called parallel fault simulation. So, here the main motivation is that computer words are or contain multiple bits typically 32 or 64 also in some modern machines. So, here we take advantage of multi bit representation of data and also we, we know that we have and or this kind of logical operations which are available in the instruction set. Well, even in a, even in a language like C, we have uh, the logical and ampersand, logical or the bar or not this kind of operations which you can carry out on an entire word. Like say in C if I write A equal to B and C let us say. So, B will be let us say a 32 bit word, C is a 32 bit word. So, what is carried out is bit by bit ending and you get the result A this is A. Now, the thing is that in this single instruction you are actually carrying out 32 AND operations, there are 32 bits, this AND is carried out bit wise for, for each of the 32 bits. So, there is a parallelism involved here, okay. this is exploited in this method. So, what we do here in every pass of the simulation, we simulate the fault free circuit as well as w minus 1 of the faulty version. I shall be illustrating with an example, what I am saying is that in my computer word I have w bits, I reserve one of the bits let us say the first bit for the fault free circuit and remaining w minus 1 bits I reserve for representing the faulty behavior in presence of one of the faults. So, at a time I can represent the behavior for w minus 1 faults. So, if there are more number of faults I have to repeat this multiple times. So, this what we do in one pass. So, if there are total of q faults, so at any single pass I can simulate with w minus 1 faults. So, I need q divide by w minus 1 ceiling of that so many passes. And here as I said in this w minus 1 bits we are hard coding the faults into the bits. That is why we cannot use fault dropping, we cannot remove a fault just like that. So, here also we have to simulate with all the faults. Let us see with the help of an example, but first let us see how we insert faults. There are many methods uh, which have been proposed. So, here we are explaining one of the methods. So, we illustrate with a particular gate, let us say I have a gate in my circuit whose output line I call it a C L. Here what we are saying is that with every line we associate two vectors m z and m o. These are used to insert the effect of faults and just one thing you remember. So, whenever we talk about the vectors let us say I have a vector like this. So, any particular bit of this vector will indicate the effect of fault f i. So, if fault f i occurs what will be the value logic value on that line. Okay. Similarly, the other bits will indicate effect of some other faults just remember this. So, here we are saying how these bits are assigned. So, what we are saying is that the rule is something like this, suppose this is an AND gate, 
So, I have the vectors corresponding to my two input lines, I first compute the and of those two vectors, let us call it z, z denotes the logic value computed at C L. Now, after I compute z, I make corrections or modifications to the bits to incorporate the effect of the faults here. What I do? I and z with m z then or with m o and this is my modified logic expression or the word at the output l. Let us see how this m z and m o bits are assigned, this is explained here. So, we are talking of the ith bit. Okay. So, ith bit indicates the simulated value corresponding to fault f i. So, if it is fault free version that means, I am talking about the first bit, then I set the bit in m z to 1, m o to 0. Let us see what happens. So, if I end something with 1, it remains the same thing, if I or with 0, it remains the same. So, I do not make any changes, z remains z, this is for the fault free version. Similarly, if the fault occurs somewhere else, not in this gate with fault not located at C L, then also I do not make any change m z is 1, m o is 0. So, here we make changes only when there is either a stuck at 0 or a stuck at 1 fault on C L. So, if there is a stuck at 0 fault on C L, we make the corresponding bits m z m o both 0 0. Why? If I do this z ampersand 0, it becomes 0 or 0 it becomes 0. So, forcibly I am making that bit 0 right to simulate stuck at 0. Similarly, to simulate stuck at 1 I make both 1 1. In, in, in fact, this uh, okay. uh, this m z uh, 1 1 means uh, uh, here this m z can be 0 also does not matter 0 1 or 1 1. So, here suppose it is 1 1. So, I end z with 1 it becomes z i or with 1. So, it is forcibly becoming 1, anything or with 1 is 1. So, I am simulating a stuck at 1. So, if there is this ith bit corresponds to a stuck at 0 or 1 fault on this particular line, then only we change the corresponding bits like this, otherwise we set the bits as 1 0 and 1 0. Right? Let us take an example. Suppose, we have a simple example consists of three gates and gate, not gate and an or gate. Just for the sake of example, let us suppose my word size is 5, first bit indicates fault free, next four bits indicate these faults. Suppose, we want to simulate with these four faults, c stuck at 0, f stuck at 1, e stuck at 0, e stuck at 1. So, there are so many lines in the circuit a, b, c, d, e, f and g. In this table, we are showing the corresponding m z and m o values, which we fix up at the beginning of the simulation. Let us see, for a, there is no fault on line a. Okay. So, for a you see for all the bits, it is 1 0, 1 0, 1 0, all 1 0, 1 0, 1 0. So, m z is all 1, m o is all 0. Similarly, b there is no fault in this list. So, b is also like that 1 0 1 0 all 1 all 0, but when you come to c you see that the second bit simulates the fault c stuck at 0. So, you see for the second bit we have made it 0 and 0, but the rest are 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0. d again there is no fault, so d is all 1 0. E. In E, both faults are there in the last two bits. This is E stuck at 0, this is E stuck at 1. So, you see for E, this last but one bit we put 0 and 0 to simulate stuck at 0, and last bit 1 and 1 to simulate stuck at 1. Rest are 1 0 1 0 1 0. In F, the middle bit is stuck at 1, so you see middle bit is 1 and 1 g no fault all 1 0 right. So, we fix these vectors a priori. 
then suppose we want to simulate with a 1 b 1. So, we start with a vector where a is 1 for all the cases, b is also 1 for all the cases. So, it is 1 for the fault free circuit also for the faulty circuits you are applying the same inputs ok, a is 1 all 1 b is all 1. Now, you progressively carry out simulation for this see this is a fan out connection for d this will be straight here and here in d what you do you just recall the equation and m z or m o right. So, this 1 1 which is coming in and m z all 1 same or m o all 0 same. So, it does not change it remains all ones. let us come to c this is also fan out branch So the same 1 1 1 1 1 will be z here z and this. So, this bit becomes 0 or this. So, this second bit becomes 0. Now, when you take and you do a bit by bit and of these two vectors 1 1 1 1 1 and 1 0 1 1 1. So, it becomes 1 0 1 1 1 that is z. Then you make correction with E and with this, this bit also becomes 0 or with that, that bit becomes 1 is already 1. So, now E becomes 1 0 1 0 1. Similarly, there is a not get 1 1 1 1 1 becomes 0 0 0 0 0, then inject the effect of fault and with this and or with this, this middle bit becomes 1, middle bit becomes 1 then finally, or this and this or no fault in g it becomes this. So, so in the process when you finally, get the word at the output you see that your fault free output is 1 you check where are the 0 bits you see there are 2 zeros, which means this 0 corresponds to c stuck at 0 this 0 corresponds to e stuck at 0 which means both c stuck at 0 and e stuck at 0 are getting detected by this vector and all these four faults we have simulated together in parallel in this one pass. So, you see if it is a 32 bit word we can simulate 31 faults together right this is an advantage, but the overhead is that you have to use this m z and m o and for evaluating each gate normally you would be requiring only and for an and gate, but here even after evaluation you need an additional and and an additional or operation for this correction. This is the overhead. So, two, two additional operations on every line using m z and m o. So, this method is clearly faster than serial fault simulation, but the disadvantage is that it is applicable to combination circuits only and it cannot be used in even driven mode because you are injecting different faults in different bits, you cannot identify the events like that, that I have to simulate this part not that part, you have to simulate for all the faults. Now, this same method means if you can modify a little bit, you get a third approach. Let us try to see in the parallel fault simulation what we are doing, we were simulating many faults together with one test vector at a time. Okay. So, how we are simulating many faults together by having m z m o in all the lines. So, what was the difficulty or the drawback on every line computation we needed one additional and and one additional or operation during the simulation processing, but suppose we do it the other way around what is the other way around? We inject one fault at a time, one fault at a time means we can modify the net list just like we mentioned earlier and we do parallel simulation, but now the different bits will indicate the different test vectors not the different faults. So, we are simulating with different test vectors together. So, what is the advantage? Now, we are doing away with those m z and m o, we have no m z m o, we are injecting one fault at a time means we are actually modifying the circuit net list, we are packing the bits with the different vectors and we are simulating them together. Result is that this will run faster as compared to 
the earlier method parallel fault simulation because we are not requiring to store and process the mz and mo vectors right so uh, here as i said instead of simulating a faulty set of faulty circuits in parallel we simulate a set of test vectors in parallel so if your fault list consists of q faults so at a time you are simulating one fault. So, total you need q plus 1, 1 for the fault free simulation and q for this q faults and in each of the passes you are simulating with all the test vectors. Like how you are simulating with the test vectors, I am giving a small example. Suppose, I have a 4 bit circuit, 4 input circuit, let us say T 1, T 2, T 3, T 4. Let us say the inputs are A, B, C, D, okay. the circuit inputs are A, B, C, D. Suppose, the test vectors are as follows, T 1 is uh, 0 1 0 1, T 2 is 1 1 0 0, 1 0 0 1, 0 0 1 1, let us say. So, now, the way we pack our word, let us say we have a 4 bit word in this case. The first bit will indicate T 1, second bit will indicate T 2, third bit will indicate T 3, fourth bit will indicate T 4. So, there will be one word for line A, one word for line B and so on. So, for line A, the word will be 0 1 1 0. Similarly, for line B, the word will be 1 1 0 0. So, in my circuit, if I have a scenario where there is a let us say AND gate which is driving A and B, I can directly take the AND of these two without any corrective steps, simply bit by bit AND it becomes 0 1 0 0. So, the output vector will be 0 1 0 and 0. This will be much faster as you can see. Okay. So, this is clearly faster than parallel logic simulation because except the fault side other parts we have not making any changes. Uh, with this we come to the end of this particular lecture. In the next lecture, we shall be looking at a couple of uh, you can say very interesting and you can say more powerful techniques for fault simulation, where all the faults are simulated together. There is a very well defined technique that we shall be presenting there where the faults are all handled together and another thing also ensured the process will be even driven. We will not process the parts of the circuit where there are no changes that will make the process even faster. So, this we shall be discussing in our next lecture. Thank you.